Hello, my name is Ray Poole. I'd like to share some basic techniques of playing the harp with you. Whether you play a pedal harp or a lever harp of any size, most of these techniques remain the same. There are many schools of harp playing. These are my opinions based on my experience. We've learned to approach the strings with a good hand position. We've learned to place the fingers in advance of playing. We've learned to articulate the fingers in the act of playing. The next bit of advice has to do with the gesture of raising the hands after the fingers have left the strings. The articulation of the fingers into the palm is combined with an appropriate gesture that brings the hand and the forearm up and away from the strings, but not so up and away as to lose control of the musical phrase. The gesture needs to be appropriate for the music that's being played. For long notes, it is a longer and controlled movement. For shorter notes, the gesture must be reduced. Let's consider another musical instrument and the physicality that makes for a successful performance. The violin plays when the bow is being drawn across the strings. For a long note, there is a long stroke of the bow. Gaining control of this movement is a constant pursuit for students of the violin. We do a very similar movement on the harp to express this. A note of greater length receives more motion in the forearm as the hand leaves the strings. Here is a whole note. One, two, three, four. Take another look. My hand is in motion for approximately three beats as it leaves the string. One, two, three. It raises and then returns the string four to replace for the next note. Look again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When the violinist plays a special kind of bowing called spiccato, the motion is very quick and short. We do the same thing on the harp. The degree of the gesture is determined by the tempo and duration of the note. If you wanted to play a series of thirds in quick succession, it would look like this. Let's look at some short samples from other videos I've posted previously. Here's a simple scale from my study called Dorian Improvisation. Each note is played with a second finger. The hand closes between each note and makes a slight raise to complete the gesture. In C major, if you play from D to D, you're playing the Dorian mode. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. These are the pitches of our Dorian chord. D, F, A, D. We talked about the control of a violinist's bow arm. Let's make a comparison to sports. Think of a baseball player at bat, a tennis player making a serve, or a golfer on the tee shot. These athletes have one activity in common, follow through. They make a commitment to a full gesture that continues on even after they have contacted the ball and it has begun its trajectory. 
without follow through, they would never score. The next clip shows both hands playing the same rhythm with the same raising gestures. The piece is Scott's What A from my collection, Ballads by Burns. More often, the hands play at two different rates of raising. One hand may be off the harp with every beat, while the opposite hand has connected phrases. Here is a sample from the Austrian carol, Still, 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 from my collection, Carols from Around the World, Volume 1. Notice the left hand plays individual intervals, raising after each one while the right hand is more connected with only occasional raises. The next sample shows what I call melodic triad inversions from the fake book Hymns and Harmony. Each melody note is placed with two additional harmony tones underneath. The hand raises from the strings for each note. The length of the raise is determined by the value of the note. Notice the varying distances for eighth, quarter, and half note. We'll add the left hand to this same melodic fragment. It will play only on the downbeat of each measure for the duration of three full counts. This should bring your attention to the comparison of short notes in the right hand versus long notes in the left. March of the Three Kings from Carols from Around the World, Volume 2, shows a left-hand pattern that is connected to the strings for a series of notes without raising, while the right hand has frequent opportunities to raise. Occasionally, they both raise at the same time as well. St. Columba from Six Celtic Hymns provides a lengthy arpeggiated pattern in the left hand that ends with a short raise before being repeated. The melody has shorter groups of notes that all end in raises of appropriate length to provide a fluid line.
Amazing Grace from Six Celtic Hymns starts off with a series of very quick arpeggios that contain no raising at all. The hands must articulate a repeated series of notes and then jump quickly to the next placement. Once the melody begins in the left hand, the right hand articulates quick repeated notes as the left hand raises to express the longer notes of the melody. I hope these examples of the raising gesture will give you a good idea of why and how raises aid in musical expression. Thanks for watching.